Google Search Console is a free tool created by Google for website owners like us so that we can see the behind the scenes data when it comes to how our website is showing up in Google search results. So just by having a free Google Search Console account, we're able to see what keywords we're showing up on Google for, if our website is having any crawling or coverage errors, and a whole lot more. But the issue is that when you first log into Google Search Console, it can look a little overwhelming. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna walk you guys through just like a super beginner friendly version of the dashboard so that you feel more comfortable diving in and looking at your data. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, I'm Mariah from MariahMagazine.com. And in today's tutorial, I'm gonna walk you guys through Google Search Console. Okay, so we're gonna dive into a very beginner-friendly overview of the Google Search Console dashboard. If you haven't set up Google Search Console just yet, do me a favor, pause this video, click in the video description box below because I have a separate tutorial where I walk you guys through how to set up Google Search Console and how to submit your sitemap. So go and do those two things before diving into the overview here because then by that time you should start to have some data starting to collect there. But without further ado, let's just get into the tutorial. So in order to get to your Google Search Console dashboard, what you have to do is go to search.google.com slash search console. Okay, so I'll just, I'll put the really quick link to that in the video description below. But once you're logged in there, you're gonna see roughly like your dashboard is gonna look something like this, okay? And like I said, I'm not gonna go over every single thing over here on the left-hand side. That would honestly be really overwhelming. I wanna keep this really simple, really focused for you guys uh, so that you can be able to log into Google Search Console and see how your rankings are doing. What are you showing up for? Are there any errors happening, okay? So a really quick way to look at like a really quick snapshot of your data is going to be to click your Search Console Insights. So you can click on that. It's going to open up in a new tab here. So this is your data for the past 28 days. So if you're logging in here every month and you really just wanna skim the surface of your data, want like a quick snapshot of what's happening, you can click on this, scroll down, and you'll be able to see some cool stuff here. So you can flip between these, notice, It'll say trending by X percent. Those are always good things. We love to see things like that. And then we can scroll down, see how people are finding you, uh, what people are typing into Google, but we're gonna get more in depth in this data in a minute. But yeah, this is just a really great snapshot of your data. If you didn't wanna spend too much time in the Google Search Console dashboard itself. But the place where most of my clients start when it comes to Google Search Console is checking in on their performance, on their data, all of that fun stuff, okay? So you can click full report here, or you can click over here, search results. So basically what this is going to show you is like your search performance in Google search results, okay? So by default, the search type is going to be web. We're gonna keep that. The second thing here is going to be date. like. What is the time frame that you want your data to show you? So you can click the pencil here and you can choose. You can look at your data from the last six months, the last three months, 12 months, blah, blah, blah. You can choose a custom time frame here or you can choose to compare, okay? So you can look at the last three months and compare it to the previous three months. This is a really awesome way to check in and see if the things that you're doing on your website, maybe you're redoing some on-page optimization, maybe you're figuring out your SEO strategy, like being able to compare certain dates, to certain timeframes is gonna be a really great way to see if the things that you're doing for SEO are improving your results in 
search, okay? So you can go ahead and apply that. I'm not going to for this tutorial, just to keep it super simple. But basically, the four things that we have up here, so we have total clicks and total impressions. So we can see the corresponding colors in the cute little graph below. Total impressions is essentially like how many eyeballs have seen your website in search results, okay? And then total clicks is how many of those people that saw your result, how many of them clicked, okay? So when we do a little bit of math here, we end up coming up with the average click-through rate, the average of clicks through Google search to your website. That's essentially what that means. So when we click on this, we notice that the green little line shows up in the graph here. And then this is the average position, like what position you are in search results. So when we click on that, we see the gold line up here in the graph. But when we scroll down here, this is like the results table, okay? So queries is essentially just another word for your SEO keywords, okay? So these are the SEO keywords that are showing up on Google for this specific website. So you can see that we have specific data for each specific SEO keyword, but if you uncheck these, the data disappears from the table, okay? So if you log into your Google Search Console and you're like, yo, I'm only seeing clicks, it's because up here it's not selected. So this actually threw me for a loop when I first started diving into Google Search Console. So basically what we can do is we can scroll and see all of the SEO keywords that this website is showing up for. And you can add the amount of results you wanna see, scroll, you can get caught in plenty of rabbit holes here. You can also view your SEO results on a page by page basis as well. Okay, so when you click pages, these are all of the pages that are showing up in Google search results. So same thing, you can have a real field day here and you can get lost in many rabbit holes. Okay, but we're gonna head back to queries and let's say we wanted to explore this specific keyword, pottery classes, Buffalo, New York. What we can do is click on it and then we can head over to pages and this is the specific page that is showing up in position four for this keyword, okay? So this is really, really helpful. And you can also look at it reversed. So I'm gonna close out of that. So if we wanna start with pages and we're like, listen, I wanna see what keywords are showing up for this specific page or like what keywords are driving traffic from Google to this specific page, you can go ahead, you can click on it and then head back over to queries. So these are all the SEO keywords that are potentially driving traffic to this specific page. So as you can see, pottery classes, Buffalo, New York, a lot of things associated with pottery classes were in the top 10 on page one, okay? And how and why I'm saying that is because typically in search results, there's usually around like 10 results per page. So if you're seeing numbers that are less than 10, then you might be on page one. Obviously, this depends on context. It's not always true, but it's a decent rule of thumb to go off of. But if we head over here, let's find another one here. Okay, so pottery classes near me for adults, position 13.3. So essentially, for this specific keyword, this page is on page two. So that's just like a really quick overview of that. If you wanted to move up in position for one of these keywords. Like let's say this specific page, you don't like any of these keywords that you're showing up on page one for. I don't know why you wouldn't, but maybe you don't, okay? So then you're like, you know what? I actually want to show up on page one for learn pottery near me. Just like basically a different variation of this one. So what you would have to do if you want to increase your position here, maybe go from page three to page one, is that you're gonna have to re-optimize that specific page for your new priority keyword, okay? So basically, you can go to the page itself and you would re-optimize this page for the new keyword that you want to increase position for, 
okay? But this is kind of a really awful example because near me, you're actually not gonna optimize. A, like it would never say pottery classes near me. You never write that in your content. It's more location-based like this. And then Google's smart enough to know like where the searcher is so that it can connect the dots there. But essentially, if I wanted to move up in rankings for like learn pottery, I would make sure that learn pottery or like reword this so that learn pottery is like in the title and it's in the certain places to optimize this piece of content for that new keyword. OK, so I do have another YouTube video that goes through like all of the places that you should be putting your priority keyword to optimize that piece of content to show up in search results for that specific query. So I will leave a link to that video down below in the description. But basically, that's kind of like an overview of like if you're showing up, maybe, you know, not on page one for a specific keyword. It's like, OK, what you can do is always go back to your content and re-optimize for the keyword that you do want to increase the rankings for. OK, so I just wanted to mention that there. So let me close out of this. And then the other thing here is we can click this filter and you'll be able to filter your data based on all of these aspects here. So clicks, impressions, click through rate, position. So a fun way to use this is to click position and you can see like we're going to filter it by all keywords that are not on page one. OK, so if I was going to re-optimize any piece of content, I would probably start with the search results that are outside of page one if I wanted to bump them up to page one. So essentially, it's like kids painting class. I would click on that and I am teetering in between page three and page four for that. So what page is it? It's this one. So we're going to go ahead and open it. And basically what I would do is re-optimize this specific page for this specific keyword to see if we can bump up that position here. So that's just like some on-page SEO quick tips to go ahead and to help you guys maybe start increasing your rankings. Obviously, Google judges your website on over 200 rankings, so a couple things come into play, but that's basically where I would start is re-optimizing based on your new priority. So let me close out of here. So that is basically just like a really quick overview of the search results performance data when you're coming in to Google Search Console. So the other area that I wanted to show you guys quick is coverage. So basically, these are crawling errors. So when the Google bots are going through and they're crawling your website, if they see an error on your website, they're not going to go over to your contact page and be like, yo, Mariah, hey, what's up? You got an error on your website. Like Google's not going to do that. Google is going to show the crawling error in here in Google Search Console. This is another reason why Google Search Console is so beneficial is because we're able to see these errors here. So if you have an error, it will show down here and you'll be able to click the error and get more details about it. You'll be able to see like what page is affected. And then if you fix the error or honestly, sometimes I've had errors pop up on my website where it's not accurate, like the bots, it just, it, it wasn't true. <laughs> like the error that they picked up, like as technology is, it's not always perfect. So basically if you click that error and either you fix the error or it's not like a real error, you double checked on your website, it's not accurate, then there should be a button that says validate fix. You can go ahead and click that button and the bots will put that page in line to recheck to see if that error is still there. So like, when the bots found an error that wasn't actually accurate and I clicked validate fix, by them going back and recrawling, it actually got rid of that error, okay? So you can go ahead and you can do that. This is also a really good place to see how many URLs are valid on your website. You can click through here. So we have 25 pages on this website are submitted and indexed. So basically these are in Google's filing cabinet. There's some pages that are indexed and not submitted in the sitemap. Honestly, we can click on these. Yeah, not a big deal. Don't really care about those. Okay, so we're gonna head back. 
we're gonna click excluded here. So these are pages that are excluded from basically being findable on Google. So basically don't freak out when you see this <laughs> because some of the pages it's like you don't even want them to so show up in search results anyways. So I have some pages on this website that I actually added the no index tag to it. And one of them is the privacy policy and terms. Like, I don't really care. I don't really want that page showing up in search results. So I just exclude it. So before you freak out about any coverage things or any ex like any exclusions from your website, from your sitemap, just take a look and use your discernment, use context, because not all of them are always as brutal as they sound, okay? So one that we do want to pay attention to is not found 404. So this means that there is a URL on the website that no longer exists. This means that there is like a broken link here. So we do want to take a look at these. We want to validate it. We want to fix it. Okay, so let's head back. I think that's all I want to say about that one. The other section here is sitemaps. So basically what your sitemap is, is like a roadmap overview of all of the content on your website. Having a sitemap makes it really easy for the Googlebots to crawl and to index your site. So we always want to make sure that there is a sitemap submitted here in Google Search Console. I do have a YouTube video that walks you through how to submit your sitemap to Google. So I will leave a link to that in the description below. And then this box here, removals. If there's a page showing up in Google Search that you don't want to show up in Google search and you want to temporarily remove it, you can go ahead and request that. There is also some page experience things. I'm not going to dive into that in this one. The other thing that I want to point out is that if you have a penalty with Google, it will show up here under security and manual actions. OK, and then if you have a security issue that Google finds, it will show up here. And the last really cool tool that I'm going to actually dive into in this tutorial is URL inspection. OK, so this is really fun because basically what we can do is go to this website, copy a URL and paste it in here. Press enter on your keyboard and it's going to give you the rundown. OK, so like is this URL submitted? Is it indexed in Google? Is it mobile friendly? Like basically this is what we want to see. We want to see all check marks here. OK, basically this is how you can double check if like a blog post, a services page, home page, about page, all of that fun stuff. If that stuff is actually showing up in Google or not. OK, so this is an easy way to figure that out. Another use for this tool is if you created a new blog post on your website and you didn't want to wait for Google to find it on its own, then what you can do is you can submit the new URL in here and it will say like this URL is not on Google and you can click request indexing. So basically what that does is it taps Google on the shoulder and it's like, hey, we got a new URL here, a new page, a new post. Go ahead and crawl it whenever you get to it. OK, so sometimes Google will crawl it right away. Sometimes it takes a couple weeks. We really don't have any control over that. But another reason for using this tool is like if I went in and re optimized this specific URL for a different keyword, maybe Maybe I updated the content. Maybe I added some things to it. What I could do is view it here. And then if I change the content on the page, then I would click request indexing. And then it will go ahead and be put in line to recrawl so that the current content, maybe like the current, the updated SEO title, the meta description, all of that stuff starts showing up in Google search results. OK, so if you did some changes on a website, changes on a specific page, you can request that Google goes and recrawls it so that the updated information shows up in search results. And then we will just go to settings here. And this is basically just your general settings for Google Search Console. OK, so users and permissions. I already have a YouTube video that goes through how to add and delete users from your Google Search Console account. I go over the permissions in that video. I'll leave a link to that in the video description below. And then you can associate your Google Search Console dashboard with your Google Analytics account. I definitely recommend doing this. It's pretty standard to go ahead and to add it in there. I'm not going to go over that. And yeah, this is basically just like your general settings. I'm not going to go into <laughs> all of this technical things. 
But yeah, that is basically just a really quick beginner friendly tutorial for how to use Google Search Console. All right, y'all, that is it for today's tutorial. If you guys found this video helpful, give me a really quick thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and I will see you in the next video.